reminder again about our uh, polls that we're doing tonight. Um, if you support City Council's unanimous decision to use a P3 model for the upgrades needed for our sewage treatment plant, press 1 for support, press 2 for oppose, and press 3 if unsure. Um, thanks so much for all of your questions, folks. Um, we have a number of people on the line with questions. I ask you to be patient. We're going to try to get to as many of you um, as we can. We have a question from Russ um, about uh, what happens if we aren't eligible any longer for the $58.5 million from the federal government. You're live, Russ. Go ahead. I mean, um, I just concerned. I keep hearing about uh, that if we don't go with the P3 option, that the federal government will not uh, provide us with $58.5 million. Uh, you may not be able to answer this, but I was still, I, then I get concerned about what input the federal government will have about choosing a P3 contractor. And the second part of that question is also when, if we opt with the P3 project, will um, we be finished paying off the contractors or the P3 uh, group? Thanks, Russ, for your, your, uh, your, your question. Um, the, the fifty-eight and a half million dollars by the federal government is, is uh, for the public-private partnership model. Uh, there's no other forms of money that are available uh, to build Canada or any other funding the model that, that they have. So that, that's that's our source of funding. That's one quarter of the cost of the project. The federal government will not, uh, in any way, be involved with the choosing of the contractor. That is a open bid process in, in the request for proposal. And those individual companies that apply will, will win on their own merits based on, uh, on looking at the balance of, of their application. But the federal government has no say in that at all. So I'm not sure if you had another question uh, on, on that, uh, Russ. And if I missed it, could you ask it again, please? Was there a second part of that? second part was uh, if we're going with the P3 project or uh, the three P3 partnership, um, what is going to be the net? or the overall expense to uh, city of Regina residents before we paid off the contractors for the P3 group? Like how well, long do we keep paying, or will we be obligated to pay them? Well, we will be paying the, the contractor for their portion of the, the cost of construction of the wastewater facility itself. And we will uh, we have some of our own capital we'll, we'll put inside. We'll have a, a smaller obligation for a loan because that, that will be actually borne by, by the, the contractor. And we also have the $58.5 million from the federal government. Uh, we'll also have a contract with this group over 30 years, though, to operate and maintain the facility with city staff uh, over that period of time. And so that does a 30-year obligation to pay the contractor to do the maintenance operation based upon a, a performance and, and uh, performance schedule over 30 years. Thanks for your question. We have a question now from, oh, excuse me. We have a question from Rigel. Rigel wants to know if the contractor will do a better job. So Rigel, you're live. Go ahead, please. I understand that there are professionals inside and outside of uh, the city there are union workers that are clamoring to get at this. And I understand the value of a PC contract. I understand the value of the money coming in. But I think what really has to be considered and what has to be the determining factor is will the contractor in a P3 do a better job than what the city can do? And if they can't do a better job, what are you getting? That's my question. Well, we believe that, we're, that uh, we'll get a, um, let me frame it this way for you. Uh, the city does not build these facilities. We don't, we don't have the expertise to do that. Uh, and we would never build this anyway, so whether it's by the design bid build or by a P3, the private sector will build this. There's no question about that. What we don't have and it would be difficult for us to do would be to, to um, oversee this process as city staff. It's just, it's just a very different, complex innovative and very leading edge technology. The public-private partnership will give us greater value to taxpayers because there is a, um, 
a cap on, on the, the, the amount we will pay for this and not so much on the design bid bill where uh, cost overruns will be borne by taxpayers. We'll get greater value because the, uh, the company that builds it will have to build it on time and on schedule. And the risk of any overruns goes to the profit of the private company, not on the shoulders of taxpayers. So without question, in this model only, in this project only, the public-private partnership is greater value for tax dollars. Thanks for your question, Rigel. We have a question from Carl who wants to know um, why the current wording for the question. Carl, you're live. Go ahead, please. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yes, uh, in spite of the city's best efforts, there still seems to be a lot of confusion as to why one should work, uh, vote yes or no. Hmm. Why was it necessary to use the wording that is used in the referendum? Why could it not have been simplified to simply say, I'm in favor of the P3 or I'm, I'm in favor of the traditional design it built? Good question, Carl, and uh, I've heard this a lot. I know members of uh, my colleagues in council have also heard this as well. Um, we, uh, we felt that uh, at one level even the, the petition was insufficient. And um, we, we ended up saying we agreed that 24,000 plus had signed that petition based on that question. That question being the one I just read that, that, that it would be uh, to operate, to finance, operate, and maintain the new facility through a traditional design bid build. Council felt that on balance that since people signed the petition with that question, we would, we would honor that. Because people would understand, it's a bit counterintuitive to say no to something, but at the same time, we believe strongly that when, when the public understands what's at risk here, what's uh, at stake, I should say, they will support the city by saying no to that question. It was because the petition had 24,000 plus signatures based on that question. Uh, when we educate people, we provide information to them, they would just inherently say, look, we don't want to do that because we have a way to save $58.5 million and uh, the staff will be, will be protected. We don't want to see our utility rates go up. We will continue to uh, own and operate it. We are not privatizing. We have, the, we have public ownership as well as control over the facility. The people would understand that and they would vote the right way. Thanks for your question, Carl. Um, let's take uh, a minute here and uh, hear a few more remarks from Mayor Fougere, and then we'll take some more questions. Yes, so just as I've been recapping with some of these uh, our comments and questions, all very good questions, City Council believes that the P3 is the best model, uh, and uh, we're accustomed to managing relationships with contractors, so we know this very well. By using a P3 to build a new sewage treatment plant, we can expect the project to be much more efficient, and we'll see greater innovation. We'll be using the builder's international experience and design input, and this will provide us with the best opportunity with the latest plant innovation. So once again, I want to be very clear that by using a P3 building option, the city will always maintain ownership and control over the sewage treatment plant and treat sewage produced there. We'll ensure that our city employees will keep their jobs and will receive advanced training to operate this new state-of-the-art facility. We'll save nearly $80 million through innovation and partnership with the private sector. So we're asking you to vote no on September 25th. You will allow us to take on less debt and keep our taxes down. We certainly want to do what we can to reduce uh, risk to taxpayers and stretch our money for, for more infrastructure. Okay, we're going to take a few more questions in a minute. Once again, if you have a question for Mayor Fougere, please press star three and uh, you can ask a question. Um, we also want to remind you to take the poll tonight that we're doing. The question is, do you support City Council's unanimous decision to use a P3 model for the upgrades needed for our sewage treatment plant? Press one for support, press two for oppose, and press three if unsure. So we're going to go back to our callers, and um, we have a call from Yvonne. Yvonne wants to know what happens uh, with a no vote in terms of rates. You're, you're live, Yvonne. Please go ahead. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Mayor. Um, Hi. I just have a question. I know if we vote yes, our sewer rates go up. If we vote no, are the rates going to go down? Like, will we get a reduction or, say, in two years when 
city council thinks we've forgotten all about this, are the rates going to go up? Or will you raise our taxes? Thanks, Yvonne. I appreciate the question. Um, certainly, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the utility rates um, are used not just to fund the sewage treatment plant. They're, they're done. They're actually a part and parcel of, of our of our sewer system, and it's a maintain maintenance and operations and refurbishment of our facilities, the pipes underground. Uh, all those things are used uh, are funded through the utility, as, as compared to your property taxes. So, in both models, with the design bid build you'll see an increase, but you'll also see an immediate increase of $276 a year for four years because we have to make up for the loss of the federal money. That is to say the $58.5 million, which you will not receive if we go with the design bid build that's asked on, on the referendum question. That's the first impact. Now that covers the four years, but it also covers a loss that we will have received, would not have received um, through the 30-year uh, contract. Another $20 million will be lost, and that, that's part of that covering it as well. Now on the, uh, the public-private partnership, the P3 model, your rates will continue to go up, but in a measured way, not just for, the, for the, your water and sewer rates, I should say, but also for the maintenance of, the, of the, the entire system itself. But the shock that will happen here will be on the design bid build portion where your rates go up by $276 on average per year for four years. Thanks, Yvonne. Um, we have a question here from Dave. Dave wants to know about P3 in the stadium. Dave, you're alive. Go ahead, please. Yes, you've suggested, Mr. Mayor, that the P3 is the um, model that we should be using. It's the best model. It's innovative. I'm wondering why we're not using the P3 for the stadium. Uh, Dave, thank you very much. And actually, we are using a P3 for the stadium. It's a design, bid, build, finance uh, option. And we do have the, the contractor that will be building it will once again be on a performance-based contract. It must bring this project in at $240 million and is performance-based. If they come uh, over budget or delayed, they pay for that. Uh, they also are doing some, some financing of it as well. So what we don't have in this case, uh, Dave, is the, the maintenance and operation is not with the builder. So it's a bit separate from that. But So we use the same model because we believe very strongly we are, we are stretching our tax dollars, providing risk that we shifted to the builder, and the cost overruns will be shifted over to them, not to taxpayers. Thanks for your question, Dave. We have a question from Cameron. Uh, Cameron, go ahead. You're live. I understand you want to know um, the, why we're having a referendum. Yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, I support the, the no vote. Uh, I'm, I'm concerned of all the money that it's costing us to go through this process, and I understand the election process quite well, but what I can't understand is why we have a national union unelected trying to dictate how we manage our city when we have elected officials who have supported this uh, program, PT program, unanimously. Thanks, Cameron, for your question. Now, all your points are very well taken. Um, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're having a referendum because uh, in, in the judgment of council, of 11 members of council, um, while the petition was technically speaking uh, invalid or insufficient, uh, there were 24,300 signatures on that document. And it was an expression of concern, greater than 10% of the population threshold. And we felt, um, and I felt for many people talking to me, I know members of council felt the same way, uh, we want to see a vote on this. So we agreed to do that. Uh, this is a part of democracy. Uh, anybody who has a 10% um, of the population sign a petition uh, has the right to have a referendum if it's sufficient. So it is costing us money, no question about that. Um, sometimes uh, it does, does cost money to do it, but we believe this is a chance for, for a clear direction by the citizens to say they want us to go for the, the uh, P3, they, they will vote no in this referendum, and set aside this agenda of trying to call the issue what we should be doing. You know, we don't have a lot of uh, resources to build our city. Eight, per eight cents of every uh, dollar you, s you send to your governments and taxes comes to the city for, for its operations. So we have to find a way to stretch that tax dollars and look for, for partners to build these incredibly complex and expensive facilities. So we're looking for the federal government and the province in some cases to come to the table and support us and have done that for $58.5 million. It's just, to me, it's such an obvious choice to make. But we're into referendum now, and we'll be finished in another seven days, eight days, 
and I hope that you and uh, others will vote no and allow us to proceed with the P3 uh, on their wastewater treatment plant. Thanks very much, Cameron. We have a question here from Phil, um, and just looking for some clarification on the the uh, question again. Phil, you're live. Go ahead, please. Uh, hello, Mayor Fisher. Um Yeah, I'm, I'm not uh, clear on the yes and no part of it. Um, no would put a stop to the building of the of of this uh, water treatment plant, or would it just uh, prevent our taxes from going up? Hey Phil, thank you for the question. I appreciate it. Um, the the question on, on the uh, petitions of, uh, on the referendum is the following. So so we can be clear what this is, is that the council of the city of Regina publicly finance, operate and maintain the new wastewater treatment plant for Regina through a tradition design, bid, build, DBB approach. So it's not a question of whether we're going to build it or not, uh, Phil, we're going to build this. It's how we finance it, operate and maintain it. And we disagree with the question that, that was put forward by the petitioners. Uh -huh. We strongly disagree and say that we should vote no to this question. And by voting no, we will, we will have access to $58.5 million from the federal government. We will, we will spread the risk of cost overruns to the builder not to taxpayers. So the question is, is clear in the sense that it would be for the design bid built, and we strongly disagree with that and ask people to vote no, and thereby agreeing to go with the public-private partnership. Thank you for your question, Phil. And again, I want to remind people, if you have a question for Mayor Fougere, um, we have about 15 minutes left. 10 minutes left, I guess, but please, uh, we can take maybe a couple more uh, questions. Uh, press star three if you have a question for the mayor, and we will try to um, um, get in as many as we can. And now we have a question from Ken. Ken has a question about, uh, I guess, specifically about the Hamilton uh, situation. Ken, you're live. Go ahead, please. Uh, hello, Your Worship. I, my question is, uh, uh, Hamilton uh, had a, a P3 project back in the 1990s, and the contractor on his maintenance uh, uh, didn't carry out that maintenance, and the city had to take it back and uh, take over the project. Uh, 30 years of maintenance uh, of running a facility is a long time, and there's a number of changes will occur, including wages and costs and so on. How does the city protect uh, the taxpayer and yet keep the contractor happy uh, to see the uh, fruition of the contract? Ken, thank you for the question. Just, just to clarify, um, the uh, facility in, in Hamilton uh, was not a P3. It was a sole source contract. And uh, uh, Hamilton did not do his due diligence to, to ensure that the, uh, the financial muscle behind that by the company was there to do the work that should be done. Uh, had it been a P3 and had the contract been as comprehensive as we suggest ours will be, that company would still be doing that work today. So it was not a P3, it was a sole source contract, and I'm sure the city of Hamilton uh, regrets that today. But thanks for the question, Ken, I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Ken. We have another question from Miles. Miles wants to know if this is about cutting jobs. Miles, you're live. Go ahead, please. Yes, Mayor. Um, my, my question really is why is there even a, a yes, no vote here? Um, we're receiving close to $60 million to help improve our sewage. Um, and again, is this because um, others are worried about jobs as to why they're um, they're objecting to uh, what we're trying to do by bringing in this money? I, I think, uh, Miles, thank you for the question. I think that might be part of the answer, although I, I don't know for sure. But as I mentioned earlier, and I want to be very clear to listeners here, that uh, there, uh, there will be no job loss. Uh, there cannot be job loss un under Saskatchewan law. Uh, succession rights uh, under provincial legislation means you must, and we, in fact, will carry over the collective agreement, the same jobs, the same bargaining unit, the same union, as if nothing had changed at all for the employee. Uh, what will change in a positive way is that they, they uh, will receive advanced training that they, that they wouldn't receive today, for example. 
If they choose to go back to the city of Regina and not work with this new company, they, they will have a job with the city of Regina as well with the same benefits, same salary. They won't lose anything. So it may be that part of the, uh, the concern is uh, about job loss, but it's completely unfounded. Thanks for your question, Miles. We're going to go to Loretta now. Loretta has a question about um, costs of the referendum. Go ahead, please, Loretta. Hi, Loretta. Oh, sorry. Hi. Um, my question was, how much is the referendum costing us as taxpayers? And if, if anybody can raise a petition, why do we bother voting for council? Uh, I think that's what we voted for, them to make the decisions. I, I completely agree with you, Loretta, and uh, having a government by referendum would, would be a gridlock and nothing would get done. The last referendum that we had here was in 1991, so it is a rare occurrence. Um, and that was on uh, store hours, so that's why we can, we can shop on Sundays now because of the referendum. Times have changed, of course. But um, again, I think that uh, it, it's not easy to get 10% of the population to sign a petition. And you could argue that, in this case, technically speaking, they didn't get there. They, meaning the Water Watch Group, had less than 10%. But they did have, although they were discounted, 24,000 plus signatures, enough for council to believe that, in this case, we should actually do that. So we're into it, and uh, we're in the home stretch. The cost of the referendum is, is uh, twofold. Uh, the cost by the city clerk to actually have the polling stations put out, the advertising for when you vote and, and locations, et cetera, is around three to four hundred thousand dollars to do that in total. That includes uh, uh, staff time that are paid to work that day, all the advertising for it, as I said before, and, and, and the, uh, the ballots being uh, uh, made up as well. The city is also, uh, uh, city council is providing an education program to residents to understand why we are uh, it's important to vote for a P3 to vote no in the referendum, and that's about $340,000 right now. Thank you very much for your question, Loretta. We have time for a couple of more questions, and then the mayor will wrap up for this evening. Um, if you didn't have a chance to ask your question, please stay on the line at the end of the um, uh, town hall meeting and leave a message for our staff. Your questions are important and we want to respond to you. I have a question here from Stephen, Mr. Mayor. Stephen wants to know um, how a private company is going to make a profit and still cost less. Stephen, go ahead, please. You're live. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor. Um, private companies are responsible to their shareholders and as such they're expected to show a profit. Uh, I'm curious how a private company can show a profit to their shareholders and still come in cheaper. I mean, it's over 30 years. And uh, I was at the, the Water Watch Forum last week, and they said on average that, you know, respectable return is 10 to 15% profit for the shareholders. So to my mind, that sounds like an awful lot of money over 30 years. Thanks, thanks to you for your, your question. And I would disagree with the 10 to 15%. I think that that's a bit, uh, a bit fat, a bit uh, unrealistic. But uh, let me say that both on the uh, design bid build, which we are, which we don't agree with, and the public-private partnership, which we do agree with, both are being built by private companies, and both will make a profit. So there's no difference on that uh, to begin with. Um, but again, I say that the companies that, that are going to be responding to this, when they know they have a, you know, a, a uh, revenue source for 30 years, can can project what their costs are going to be. They they are going to have. Uh, proof that they've built these before in other locations, that they have uh, supply chain for buying chemicals as one example, which would be much more efficient and cheaper than the city of Regina could do, could ever hope to do. They have the margins that are lower because of the volume of work they're doing over 30 years. But again, I want to stress that on, on design bid build, there is no reason, there's no way to contain cost of construction for delays or cost overruns. On the public-private partnership, uh, we have a, a, a fixed price contract with performance on it. And over the course of that construction, we'll be watching to make sure they're meeting the milestones, that they're actually doing what they're going to do. If they come in over budget over time, then they may not be paid for that. So the discipline is actually coming on budget on time. And of course, they understand what those costs will be. And before they bid, they know what their profit margins will be. Uh, all this being said, uh, those margins are really very much a part of the, the bidding process. 
but again, the companies coming in under under public-private partnership are are, um, are substantially uh, knowledgeable of what they've got to do. But a 10 to 15 percent um, profit margin is, I just think, is is way way unrealistic to be to be considered as a, as a any kind of reliable argument. Thanks for your question, Stephen. Um, our last question is uh, for Chris. Chris has a question about expertise in the private sector, or pardon me, uh, in the public sector. Chris, go ahead, please. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I just had a discussion with a friend the other night, and my main concern is that if the people vote yes, are the experts available in the city to even build and operate and maintain the sewage system? Thanks, Chris, for the question. And I want to start by saying that the, the um, we have very good staff at the city of Regina. They work very hard for us all the time. Um, but we're looking at, at a brand new facility with a state-of-the-art technology, and we believe very strongly that this new technology, once in place, uh, will be uh, difficult for our staff to adjust quickly to this. And part of the reason we're going for public-private partnership is that they bring that expertise and knowledge and the training for for staff. We we do not build these facilities. We rarely build any kind of facility. We we, we contract that out. Uh, we ask other companies to build a force in the private sector. They'll do the same thing here. But they will bring in um, a, a consortium, a number of companies together that will that will provide for the design uh, and the construction of that, which is far beyond our capacity as a city to do that. So um, the expertise will be there with the city, but initially um, covering the cost, keeping the cost contained, and spreading the risk to the private sector, the public-private partnership is the way to go. So again, we're asking you to vote no on the referendum question and support us receiving $58.5 million from the federal government. Thank you very much for your question, Chris. Um, our time's nearly up, so I'm going to pass this to the mayor now to uh, wrap up this evening. And as I said, please remember, if we didn't get a chance to get to you, um, leave, stay on the line after the teleform, leave a message for our staff, and someone will get back to you. Mayor Fougere. Well, thanks, everybody, for uh, attending uh, tonight's teleform. It was a pleasure to talk to you tonight and answer your questions. So I want to summarize. We're doing uh, some major upgrades to our sewage treatment plant. This new plant has absolutely nothing to do with our drinking water. And please understand that no matter which approach is used, the private sector will build the new sewage treatment plant. The city will always own and control the sewage treatment plant and our utility rates. As your mayor, the council and I will have responsibility to find the best approach on any project. We will deliver the best value to you, the taxpayers. So I'm asking you to vote no to the question on September 25th. You'll save $276 a year on your utilities, and you will allow the city to access $58.5 million in federal funding. For more detailed information on the sewage treatment plant, please take a look at the city's website at www.regina.ca. Thank you once again for participating in this town hall meeting. If you need anything from me, please call me at my office at 306-777-7339. Thank you very much and good night.
not be able to contain costs in any, any sense of the word. Our infrastructure dollars would be stretched into this project. Uh, taxpayers would be on the hook for any cost overruns or delays. We would no longer have access to the $58.5 million from the federal government. And that would be, I think, a huge mistake for us to walk away from that. Uh, knowing that we, we in, our, in our proposal for P3, we contain the cost, uh, and, it, and the contractor is, would be liable for all those cost overruns and delays. And we have a very efficient way to maintain and operate it, maintaining all city employees on that site. So the question very clearly is to go for a design bid build. Uh, again, council unanimously agreed to the uh, to uh, a public-private partnership, nor to uh, shift the risk to the builder and to the contractor who maintains it and stretch our tax dollars much more wisely. Thanks for your question, Erwin. We have another question um, about, uh, and this is from Bill. Um, sorry, Bill, my screen keeps jumping around. Uh, Bill, can you, Bill has a question about the uh, difference between more borrowing, uh, city borrowing and private sector borrowing money. Bill, go ahead, please. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was at a Water Watch forum at the university last week, and there was a lot of discussion about the huge gap that there is between borrowing that the city can do, the cost of borrowing for the city, versus the cost of borrowing for the private sector. Uh, the inference was that the private sector borrows at a much higher rate, and that would add on to the cost of the project. My understanding is that that gap isn't so large anymore, is that, which is the case. Uh, I can tell you emphatically that the gap is, is closed. Um, there's no question that, uh, that there may be a slight difference between private sector and government. And we've been arranged on, I won't say this uh, is actually in this case, you don't know until you actually go to the market tomorrow. But I can tell you that, that the rate for this would be no more than 0.5 to 1% difference. Uh, interestingly, when the uh, council was considering uh, this law was voted in favor of the, of the P3, we had some uh, some uh, delegations come to council um, who are on, watch water, on the uh, water watch group and acknowledge that those rates are, are virtually down to zero. So these are large companies, uh, in some cases multinational, that command uh, a great deal of, uh, of, of power when they go to the market for money. And you're looking for a 30-year debenture, uh, these companies, they certainly would have the very close to the same margin as, as a uh, minister of government would have. So that gap is closed quite significantly. In some cases, there's been reports last weekend in the Golden Mail, that when you, when you look at the risk factor of this one, there's virtually no difference between them on, on, on borrowing. So we're very confident we're on the right track to uh, again, save taxpayers money uh, on this and uh, spread the risk around away from taxpayers. Thanks for your question, Bill. Um, we have a question um, from Malcolm. And Malcolm wants to know about advanced polls. Malcolm, you're live. Go ahead. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd like to participate in the uh, referendum vote here as a taxpayer of the city. And uh, But uh, my uh, circumstances are going to be taking me away from the city for the next uh, couple of weeks here. So just wondering what my options are for advanced polls and uh, for maybe online type of voting. Uh, Malcolm, thanks for your phone call. and. Um, Unfortunately, there's no online voting. Uh, that may come in the future when we can uh, make sure that we have the right people voting, of course, that actually do vote. But uh, it is on Saturday, the 21st. And if you're looking at today's paper, I believe there is a, uh, there's, a there's a notice in there uh, at the malls across the North Gate Mall, the Golden Mile, no review in City Hall, I believe, in Pass Victoria Square. So there is voting on Saturday, and that will be your advance poll. Good. Thanks for your question, Malcolm. Um, Okay, just a reminder again about our uh, poll that we're doing tonight. Um, if you support City Council's unanimous decision to use a P3 model for the upgrades needed for our sewage treatment plant, press 1 for support, press 2 for oppose, 